Welcome to the With You Rugby Podcast, designed to give you an in-depth look at the United States Rugby Foundation, including our grant programs and recipients, fundraisers, events, and much more. Now let's get started. Hello, everyone. I'm Brian Vizard, President of the United States Rugby Foundation, and welcome to our With You Podcast. The With You Podcasts are designed to give you all the information you need about U.S. Rugby Foundation events and fundraisers, our grants programs, our grants recipients, and everything else dealing with the United States Rugby Foundation. Recently, the Rugby Foundation entered a partnership with Girls Rugby, Inc., and we're pleased to welcome in today on our With You Podcast, CEO and founder of Girls Rugby, Inc., Jen Heinrich. Welcome, Jen. Thanks for taking part. Thanks so much for having me. Great to be here. Well, let's talk about a little bit about you, Jen, to start out with. Uh, what is your involvement in sports and how did you get involved with rugby? Uh, so my involvement in sports kind of started at a young age. I was that really active, high energy kid running around the neighborhood, playing games, climbing trees, kind of doing all that good stuff. Um, and I have been uh, passionate about playing sports really from a young age. I think I was Three, when my dad first started to teach me how to swim, that was my first sport. I started competing at five and kind of fell in love with um, competing. And um, and then after that, was really fortunate to be kind of on the tail end of the Title IX, uh, kind of the heels of that movement, and picked up basketball and soccer in elementary school, continued playing in high school, picked up softball, um, and then I wound up playing soccer at Vanderbilt University, which is where I went to college. Um, unfortunately for me, rugby was not an option growing up although I would have loved it. So my first introduction was through my husband uh, who played at the University of Kentucky and then in Chicago when we lived there and then here in Orsu, uh, at Orsu and here in Oregon. So he was really the person who connected me to the game, uh, to the community and was the one who ultimately connected me to my first administrative role with Rugby Oregon. Yeah, well, you mentioned Rugby Oregon. What made you decide to build a, a youth and high school rugby organization? Yeah, great question. So I, I was not actively looking for a role at that time in, in youth sports or really in the nonprofit space. My background had been um, in marketing and advertising up to that point. Uh, but I had an opportunity that presented itself at a time when I was staying home and our kids were really little. Um, and I had started exploring um, some business opportunities when my husband had told me that Rugby Oregon was really looking to formalize their administrative structure and uh, hire an administrator. So um, I went in and I met with their board and they were amazing. And I was really intrigued by what they were trying to do. Um, and ultimately they hired me for the role. So I felt really fortunate. Um, but I do recall telling them that um, I would probably only do this role for a year um, and that I would likely, you know, go back to corporate America. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I quickly fell in love with this opportunity, really uh, the opportunity to build a business, but also kind of to, you know, build something that can make a difference in the lives of others um, and completely fell in love with, I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but fell in love with the, the culture and the community and the sport and just found it really fulfilling. And so here I am 19 years later and still uh, still working in rugby. So, and wow. yeah, so, and, you know, definitely for me, like having been a more traditional athlete where you play the game, you win, you lose, you go home, you know, building a youth uh, rugby organization, specifically youth rugby that was more than the wins and losses, right? It's about building that community. It's inclusive. It was really focused on teaching those life lessons and leadership opportunities. So those are really the reasons that I that I stayed and why I've been so passionate about creating opportunities for, for young people to participate in the sport of rugby. Well, tell us a little bit about Girls Rugby, though, and how that organization came about. Uh, yeah, so Girls Rugby was actually founded by myself, uh, Aaron Kennedy, and Hannah Harper. And we all had been connected through... Um, through rugby over the years. Uh, I, knew, I knew Aaron for, from um, USA Rugby Days. Hannah was actually an intern there as well. Um, and Hannah actually came through Rugby Oregon as a player and then went on to be uh, a collegiate All-American. And then you probably know was a, a capped eagle as well. So um, in late 2017, we kind of had a couple of phone calls and, and we were discussing the fact that there simply weren't enough opportunities for girls to get involved in the game in the United States. Um, at that time, there were 1,050 girls that were participating in kind of that introductory or what we call the, you know, the rookie rugby level um, in the United States. So for a country of 325 plus million, um, you know, 1,050, we thought we can do better than that. And almost 100% of those programs were co-ed programs and not really marketed for girls. So um, we decided that, you know, we wanted to, we wanted to step into that space. And, and we also knew that you know, girls who play sports have higher levels of confidence and self-esteem. They have lower levels of depression. They have better academic outcomes. Um, and then we also learned kind of in, as we were doing our research 
about the disparity in opportunities. So the, um, the Women's Sports Foundation had posted um, a report and talked about how there were f 4 million fewer opportunities for girls to participate in sports when compared to boys. So, you know, knowing firsthand the positive impact that sports can have, we decided, you know, to get together for a long weekend uh, somewhere. We picked San Diego, locked ourselves in an office for a few days, and that was where the concept for Girls Rugby was born, in your hometown, so. Yeah, now what, what are the goals of Girls Rugby and how does it differ from other rugby organizations? Yeah, great question. So the mission of Girls Rugby is to empower girls to reach their potential through sport. Um, and we do this by combining flag rugby with our, we have a, a leadership and, and values-based curriculum that we developed ourselves. And girls have an opportunity to learn both kind of rugby skills, but also life skills. Um, and then they're given the opportunity to practice those skills each week at training and, and on game days in kind of this safe and supportive environment. So, you know, traditionally the narrative has been different for girls or female identifying versus boys. Um, for years, girls have been told this, this story that they're meant for certain roles or certain jobs and responsibilities. And, um, and I, as I always say, heck, even our fairy tales told us to wait for Prince Charming to come along and save us. So we're working to change that narrative a little bit. We're teaching them um, that they have limitless potential, that they can do anything that their peers can do. Um, and really, you know, the program supports them in being brave. I think it's a big component of who we are and what we do and, and providing the space where they can you know, it's okay to try new things and sometimes you're going to fail, but helping them to see that they can overcome um, and they can achieve. So really it's about learning those rugby skills and being a part of a community that's inclusive and supportive, but also um, learning these life skills that they can apply on the field or, you know, beyond the rugby pitch as well. I mentioned our, our partnership between the foundation and Girls Rugby Inc. What are you, what are you most excited about between that and that partnership? Oh my gosh, so much to be excited about. Um, the partnership has really uh, been a total game changer for Girls Rugby. And I guess first I should just say thank you because, um, you know, it's amazing to be partnered with an organization that is equally passionate about supporting grassroots rugby in the United States. So this partnership has really, from day one, um, been this kind of collaborative, supportive, open, you know, conversation. Um, and really it's for us, it's been this catalyst for accelerating growth. So, you know, the U.S. Rugby Foundation has supported the placement of program managers in two of our key markets, um, you know, helped us with co-branding of tents to ensure we all have visibility in our various markets um, and some other, you know, basic programmatic costs. But, um, but truly, you know, like I said, each conversation has been amazing and it's so great to be partnering with an organization that values kind of the growth of the game and, and really values that life and, and leadership piece as well. It's not just about the rugby piece, but I know U.S. Rugby Foundation is, is equally as passionate about that. So um, together, I think we're really going to affect change and, and really accelerate growth in the country. Yeah, we're looking forward to it as well. And I know for a fact that uh, the message is getting out. I dropped my granddaughter off at school and I see the girls' rugby signs all along the way. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. So what, what's next for girls' rugby, though? What, yeah, what can so we look forward to? Yeah, I think our focus really is kind of this continued focus on program growth and creating more opportunities for participation, um, supporting our players and the families, and, of course, you know, our volunteers are, are the lifeblood of our organization and they make our programs happen. So, um, you know, continuing to support them to be successful. Um, and I think the big thing, too, is creating awareness that rugby is a great option for young girls of, you know, all shapes, sizes, colors and backgrounds. And, um, you know, for us, I, I think that that branding piece is really key. And I know that's important for U.S. Rugby Foundation as well. When we first started, when we got into this, we started um, and I I know I've told you, Brian, this story before, but, you know, we Googled uh, girls rugby in the United States and we Googled, you know, every which way on every search engine possible to see what it looked like out there before we started the organization. And there was nothing, right? There, not nothing, but there were, you would typically get images of national team players, men and women. You would get all, all kinds of things that were not related to little girls playing rugby. So that's been another component of, of what we've done is really try to elevate the brand awareness and to create imagery that exists out there so that girls can see themselves in girls rugby and say, oh, that looks like me and that is for me. And instead of kind of wondering like, what is this thing and why don't I know what it looks like? Um, it, it, it helps make that transition just a little bit easier. Now, what do you, uh, you've, I'm sure you probably projected out a bit. What do you see girls rugby in five years? What can we expect and, and look forward to? Well, <laughs> I think in, in five years, we'd like to see 500% growth. Um, you know, right now we're on target for kind of hitting that 100% growth each year, which is obviously easy when you're starting out and your numbers are a little bit smaller. 
Um, but again, it kind of goes back to that programmatic growth. So greater accessibility, more opportunities for girls to be active. We want to be in more states. Um, we're actually crossing over um, the, the border out of the United States into Canada this fall. So that's kind of exciting to move into that international space as well. Our primary focus is still in the United States and, and opening up in more states and more locations. Um, but really, we want to use our platform to empower young people, right, to be confident and to be courageous and to be resilient individuals, particularly now coming out of such a challenging and difficult time around COVID. Um, but really, you know, using our platform to kind of create those those leaders and change makers of tomorrow. Now, do you have any advice for young girls who are just taking up the game or maybe those who might, you know, maybe they saw it at the Olympics and are like my granddaughter. Now she's she's a little more fired up about trying to play rugby. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we've got a lot of those little girls who are coming out who have who have seen it and, and some of them who are, you know, followers of Alona Mar now on TikTok, who's our TikTok <laughs> sensation, right? right. Um, but I think my advice to young girls um, and same thing I say to my daughter, right, is, you know, be brave enough to try new things. You know, go out and meet and embrace new friends, meet new people, um, you know, take opportunities that are in front of you and, and, and try new things and try things, try to find those things that bring you happiness and joy. Um, you know, and, and find the things that you're passionate about. But I think just being brave to try new things, right? Get out of your comfort zone. Um, and I think a lot of times that, you know, you find that space inside of rugby and, and it's such a great space to do it in, right? Where it's positive and supportive and um, everybody's got your back and you're in this great community. So that would that would probably be my, my advice to young girls. Now for those young girls out there and maybe their parents who are interested in, in checking out Girls Rugby Inc., how can they do that? Uh, so they can go to our website, which is www.girlsrugbyinc.com. Um, and we are always looking for more volunteer coaches and referees. Um, we also hire uh, program coordinators and program managers to help us run those programs on the ground. Um, and then we also have an internship program. So we usually have at least one or two interns each um, season. So spring, fall, you know, winter, summer. Um, and those are typically around social media marketing internship positions. So that's how you find us. That all sounds great. We're, we're very, very excited here with the Rugby Foundation to be involved with the, the great programs you have and look forward to a bright future between the two of us. So thank you so much, Jen. Thanks so much. I appreciate the platform to talk about girls rugby. Yeah, thank you very much. So that, that's going to do it for today, folks. But I uh, want to thank on behalf of the United States Rugby Foundation, Girls Rugby CEO, Jen Heinrich, for taking the time to be with us today. Uh, stay tuned for more With You podcasts in the future. Please sign up for our electronic newsletter on our homepage at usrugbyfoundation.org. And until next time, stay safe, everyone.